Now that we have an understanding of how each combined effect works, let's switch back to our sign and continue with our kite. Recall that we have just created the outline of the path so that we can use it as a stencil to remove that portion from the kite. Let's select both the path and the kite, apply the cut out effect, and now we have our kite with a cross. The kite needs to look as if it is flying against the wind. We need to bulge it out a little. We could use the path and point edit tool to adjust all the points, but there is a better way. That's where the distort effect can be used. The distort effect will sort of bend an object into a distorted frame or shape. The only way we can understand how distortion works, especially with our kite, is to switch to a drawing with several kite shapes and apply some distortions to them to see which fits best for our purposes. As a suggestion, you may want to experiment with the distortions, but in this case, we will try a few to show how distortions are adjusted and how they can affect the shape. To apply a distortion, we first select an object, in this case the first kite, and then click on the distortion effect. Immediately, an outline appears that shows what the kite will look like before the distortion is applied. Keep in mind that each distortion has unique control handles that reshapes or rebends the distortion. To apply the distortion, click the green checkmark button in Design Central, and the distortion is applied to the shape. Let's try another one. We'll select the next kite, click on the distortion effect button, it is set to the last distortion. If we look at Design Central, we are given this pull-down menu of the different distortions. We can choose another that may give us the effect we want. This one gives a little bit more of a bulge. As you can see, it provides control handles that are a little different than the previous distortion. Once again, you'll find that each distortion has its own control handles to adjust the distortion. Let's go through a couple more to see which one fits best. This one, Arc Top, looks like it would work the best. So let's choose Arc Top. Let's switch back to our drawing and select the kite. Now we can click on the Distortion Effects button, choose from Design Central the Arc Top effect, Make some adjustments to the control handles. Click on the green check mark button to apply the distortion. And there we have the kite in its final shape. Now that we are finished with the kite portion, let's reduce the size and move it out of the way for right now. Our next step is to create a curve that will act as the tail to the kite and then use that curve as a path to place the text. Let's start by selecting the Bezier Path tool and start drawing a curved line. As each point is chosen, we have to hold the mouse button to create a curve for each point. Otherwise, the path between each point would be a straight line. The curve needs adjusting, so we can use the Point Edit tool to make some adjustments. We want to make sure the left end is curled up straight since that is where the kite will be attached. The curve is good, now let's give it a color of beige and a thickness of a little under 1 8 of an inch. We also want to make sure the end joints are rounded. We're going to convert this path to an outline object in a moment, so we should make sure the path is exactly the way we want. We can now convert the stroke to an outline by selecting the path clicking on the Arrange pull-down menu, and clicking Convert Stroke to Outline. Now for placing the text. Look at the text tool options. The third choice shows text on a curve, which is the one that we want. If we click on it, it will be expecting us to click on a curve before we were able to enter the text. In this case, we'll click on the kite tail we just created, and this blinking icon appears that signifies we can start typing. We can type flying high, 
and click on the Select tool after that. In Design Central, we can click on the Text Character tab so we can make some adjustments. Once again, we do this so that we don't have to highlight the text with our text tool. This makes it simpler to adjust the text. Let's set the font to Bengal Medium. Let's use the Fill and Stroke Editor and set the fill to Medium Green. We can also increase the size to a little under one and a half inches within Design Central. We can now stretch out the tracking, but we will use the tracking grab handle here. Click, hold, and drag it to spread the lettering so it fills the kite tail. We need to separate the text from the path. This is simply done by increasing the baseline value within Design Central. We can increase the space so visually the text is separated completely from the curve. Notice that the lowercase h at the end is kind of sticking out. We can adjust that by clicking on the dot just next to it and dragging the letter in. Let's select the kite and drag it at the beginning of the curve or kite tail. Of course, once we do that, we'll have to move the lettering down and do some final adjustments. We can make some adjustments to the kite to put it on an angle by double-clicking on it and rotating it slightly. Let's select the whole thing and drag the artwork within the border. Now we need to create the bottom part of the text. So let's select the normal text tool, click just below the kite tail path, and type kites and other aerodynamic specialties. We can also edit the text by selecting it, clicking the text tab in Design Central, and change the font to Busarama. Let's set the fill color to medium green, and do some final adjustments. Reduce the size a little, and stretch it out so it's the length of the sign. By now, you have probably noticed something is wrong with the spelling. But to make sure, let's use another text feature, which is Spell Check. Let's click on the text pull-down menu and select Spell Check. The Check Spelling window appears. Here it shows that there are two misspelled words. The first is Aerodynamic. Just below, it gives us different variations of what word we might be wanting to use with the correct spelling, of course. In this case, we'll select the first choice and click on Change. On the side window, we are given other options, such as if we want to change all, ignore the spelling, or ignore all the misspelled words. We can even add the spelling to the dictionary that comes with your LXI software. The second word is Specialties, which obviously should have an IES at the end rather than a YS. It's the second choice which we will select, and click Change. Once all the spell checks are done, this message pops up, letting us know that everything else is spelled correctly. If a sign has text, it's always a good idea to run a spell check. It saves time from having to recut or remount a job that is misspelled, perhaps even future embarrassment. Once that is done, we have to make some adjustments. 